you also get to watch uh, not only regular programming, but also get to enjoy money into your mobile money account just to ensure that you take the options. And so always choose TV3 among the options and subsequently you can go to uh, 3FM, etc. And they're always available for you. And this time what we're doing is to make sure that from tomorrow we're able to give you big or bigly, if there's any conceptualized word like that. So we're going to give you uh, uh, thousands of Ghana cities into your mobile money account. And because you're an ardent viewer of TV3 through the Shoko Star 439 hash, you get to win more. But also we have the 3FM All White Party. It is on the 28th of December uh, 2023. All of us will be there joining 3FM 92.7. You can go to their handles as well as 3news.com, get the latest. You get to book seats and get to enjoy uh, some shows, meals, interaction with great network of people from all walks of life. And then we have some great artists who are also coming, Stoneboy, Aquabwa, all of them passing through to max the year towards an enjoyable end. But when it comes to climax in the year, you remember, we had um, the year of return and subsequently uh, beyond the return, which um, has been spearheaded by the Office of the Diaspora and Affairs. And subsequently, I have the Director of Diaspora and Affairs at the Office of the President right here. Kwesi Wababio is uh, here. Good morning to you. Good morning. And I'm also told that you're also um, a Chairman of the Steering Committee of the Year of Return, as well as the Co-Chair of yeah. the Beyond the Return. I do know that uh, you introduce a new policy uh, on, related to diaspora and relations. What, what exactly is it? What's the name of the policy well, and what's the intent? I think we were lucky just last Wednesday, which okay. was the 13th of um, December. The president launched the diaspora engagement policy, policy okay. which has been in the often for quite a long time, but a long last given you know, the launch, which we were working towards of several, you know. What, what are the critical components of this policy in the first place? I think a policy, as a policy document, basically it's a framework that is going to enable all the stakeholders, not just government, and everyone interested in harnessing the potential of the diaspora mm. to work from a common, you know, hymn book. Basically, it's a framework that will enable us to harness the human and the material mm. resource from the diaspora for our socio-economic development. So we have this document that we would refer to as our Bible, as far as, you know, <laughs> dealing with the diaspora is concerned. Mm. And the, all the state agencies and, the, the, you know, the, the private sector, everyone looking to see how they can Tap into it. Tap so into this it becomes like the blueprint. Sort the of. blueprint for. And, and I know that um, for even from the 90s, we did Pan Affairs exactly. all in a bit for all of us to be able to, to get in touch with our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. When, when we say diaspora in our context, what do we mean? I think for Ghana, we have been quite emphatic with the definition of our diaspora, which is a small variation from the normal diaspora that you know other African countries look at. We, when we talk about our diaspora, we are not just referring to those Ghanaians living outside, but we are, in addition, referring to the historical diaspora, mm. which is what, you know, the year of return was essentially aimed at making sure that it was targeted at those historical African diasporans to come home back mm. to where they belong, mm. to relate to you know, Mother Ghana, and we always positioning Ghana as the gateway to Africa to enable all those who essentially are Africans in origin to to be able to you know come back. For to many us. people, we've doing we've been doing this engagement, and the launch of this diaspora engagement policy, policy. means that we're scaling it up. Exactly. The bigger objective is what. The bigger objective is really to make sure that some key policy areas can be identified and worked you know, on to you know, really get us going. For instance, we want to know how we can work on the issue of diaspora homeland relationship. Mm. I mean, how mm. do you, you know, make sure that you make it better? The panel first is something that has been going on mm. for a long time. How do you make it even better? Mm. How do you introduce new ideas, new, like December in Ghana, all those government agencies that, you know, you hear and talk about <laughs> taste of Ghana, everything. Yeah, yeah. It's all coming to the boil to make sure that this whole policy area of diaspora homeland relationship and everything that we do, we make the diaspora very much part and parcel of the country. And that is what you know it's aimed at. 
Um, by way of maybe technological transfer, knowledge transfer, etc., investment opportunities, uh, how does this policy implementation, if it is undertaken, inure to us socio-economically? I think we are working with, like I said, very many of the social, I mean, government agencies, Bank of Ghana, mm. GIPC, etc., mm. everyone working in their own small way to contribute towards this whole policy initiative. So, for instance, with Bank of Ghana, and then with all the transfer money, you know, organizations, and remittances, and remittances mm -hmm. how do you then work towards making sure that the cost of I mean, money transfer becomes as low as possible so that the full benefit of transfer can, can, be, can be, you know, attained? And then not just a case of facilitating money transfer, but how do you then see how you transform the money transfer, which is essentially most very often directed for, you know, social sort of support for families and friends to become, you know, investment oriented. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that we are looking to see. Use technology, use everything at our disposal. To, 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 to enhance. So it means that while we're targeting, let's say, African Americans, those of African descent, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, it also means that we get to encourage them to maybe offer investment opportunities of course, or yes, et cetera. Yeah, exactly, yes. Okay. So how are we then working in tandem with the relevant state agencies so that if it is that an investment is coming from a diaspora community, they have the needed tax incentives, the enabling environment for them to have the objectives met. I think um, the diaspora affairs office of the president is only playing a lead role as far as this policy is concerned. But there are state agencies, as I've mentioned, the GIPC is very much involved, the GTA very much involved. Mm. So basically, in terms of investment, you know, who is the specialized agency that is really working towards the diaspora, um, harnessing the potential of the diaspora to make sure that they can get all these incentives. Then how do you do that advocacy? We have an implementation, inter-sectorial implementation committee. Oh, there is. Oh, there is, yes. That is actually being headed or led by the Minister for Information, because oh. this is information that needs to be given to the public out there to let them know what to do. So these agencies would know how the members of that intersectorial mm. implementation committee would make sure that the agencies that they relate to mm. have got policies that reflect the, the, the core values of the principles and the ideals of this um, diaspora engagement policy. I'm sure as a, as a, as a desk or a, a directorate, and since you're heading yeah, the yeah. affairs, the diaspora the affairs as director, yeah. it also means that prior to the inauguration or, or, or this outdoor of the policy, you might have been doing some pre-stakeholder engagement. Oh, very much so. So far, what had it been, especially with those in the diaspora? I think um, I'd like to I mean, say how this um, stakeholder engagement has been taking place over a long period. As I said, this document was actually started during the time of the NDC when okay. they were in government. Mm. At that time, there was the need to you know, do that analysis of uh, situation analysis. The country was divided into three regions, mm. the mm. Northern Belt, the Middle Belt, and the Southern Belt. Consultations were made, even in Ghana, to have the buy-in of mm. Ghanaians, the traditional authorities. And then subsequently, the diasporans were you know, um, also consulted in specific um, countries were chosen. And uh, well, we came in and we started also looking at the document. We thought, you know, there was an opportunity to even broaden the, 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 scope. The, the scope. And at the beginning, the document was, I mean, limited to the Ghanaian diaspora. Mm. So we took advantage of what we knew was also available on a yeah. bigger scale to even include the historical diaspora. I mean, diaspora. They actually came forward to make sure that they were also going to be included, knowing what Ghana has been doing. I mean, it was only a right that they, they because, I mean, you could take it back to Kwame I mean, Nkrumah's leadership time when he was president and how he had encouraged the historical to be part of us and you could take it through to President Kofor's time, JJ's time, everyone has always done something to, day. yeah, to right. this day. Okay, so. so let me ask you a last question and just shortly as a response. Because you had um, this desk or directorate as the director for diaspora affairs, 
What's, how do you envisage that by the next 10 years, this policy could envisagely be achieving? And w w what do you want to see by way of the tangibles? I think I've already said that this policy is basically a documentation of what we are doing already as a country. And we are doing very well. I suppose everybody is happy with our diaspora engagement. We are making the headlines all over the world with everybody trying to relate to us in a big way. The year of return was such a big draw. But the policy gives us an opportunity to then measure, to then, you know, certainly monitor and, you know, keep a good eye on what we have on the, in the document and then start having the metrics that will enable us to know where we are going, how to do it even better. So that is what it offers us. And I believe in the future, the institutionalization of the, you know, organizations and mm. the capacity building that will go with it, institutions that are in there, will enable us to get a better hold of, you know, this diaspora engagement um, as we want it. Thank you very much. And Thank I hope that too. we can also better collaborate as we have this policy implementation or rollout Certainly. with the relevant institutions. We are I've, always available. I've had this um, great discussion with Akwesi Iwa Ababio. He's director of the Diaspora um, Affairs Directorate, Office of the President. He's also chairman of the Steering Committee of the Year of Return, co-chair of Beyond the Return, and currently also the secretary to the Interministerial Committee of the initiative beyond the return. And I know that uh, as we climb us uh, towards the end of the year, we're going to have another big event as well to mark this. But thank you for passing through. Thank you. We're taking it's a, a pleasure. Break. We'll be right back.